forget where we are. Is the Seine River in Paris? We're near Notre Dame. Finally made it to uh, the Eiffel Tower. Oh, can we get her? Yeah, they have twenty dollars from her. They don't give her change. You're about to tip Bahanoi. The old guy, the old guy. They had all. Forget where we are. The Seine River in Paris. We're near Notre Dame. Finally made it to uh, the Eiffel Tower. Oh, can we get her? Yeah, they have twenty dollars from her. They don't give her a train. Yeah, the, the old guy, 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 the Right here along our route, we have a uh, castle that goes back to Charlemagne, they say about uh, 800 AD. And now we're going into the underground basilica, which holds 25,000 worshippers. Maybe at this time they'll be you'll be able to light it the first and then leave it and they'll be lit all during the year. Okay? That's what usually happens. Then you have the taps, you can see the silver taps there. I see people are not going by them. They may be turned off because of very cold weather. So if not, you have the taps in the wall. The taps are open. Right. 
This is our hotel right here, the Hotel Seville. And right up there on top of the mountain the is the Flashing Cross. Greg had a funny comment. He said it says, eat at Joe's. Okay. I don't know we're going to be at a big concert. We have the tour of France which goes through Lourdes. Uh, it usually has like a, a, one of the, um, what they call the tap, one of the, uh, the, the, the routes they take. They go through the Pyrenees Mountains and it's one of the most grueling um, parts of the, the Tour of France. But here they're, they're you know, because we're going mad here about the cyclists because everyone sees them as well as the future uh, Tour de France uh, participants. And uh, so we're trying to get.
to imagine, uh, I don't doubt you know about Francis and, and Franciscan history, but in, in Europe, from the 6th century onwards, you had Benedictines, and you only had Benedictines in, in Europe, and it had become a huge organization. Uh, there were Benedictines here. It was, the, uh, it was really huge. Most of the people in this late 12th century, while the St. Francis Church was finished about 100 years later. It's a church of 12th, 18th, 11th century. Yeah, that's very neat. Yeah, yeah. Assisi is the town of St. Francis, but you don't have to take too long. <laughs> you don't have to take that too seriously either. Because whenever you see cement, and uh, this is quite new, you see this was made in, uh, I think, 1950. Uh, you see. So not everything you see is medieval. But anyhow, um, uh, what is really uh, striking sometimes is to see that the level of the streets has changed quite a lot. Because there was a large door there. So you see what is left of it now. So now don't ask me why the street is on this level now. This is a question of centuries and centuries they have to build. And it's so hard to get through there, you see. <laughs> uh, or, don or, or, or donkeys. And this was the entrance door to the house, to the medieval house, which was much higher, as you can see. So you have to imagine it was quite high. Uh, and and for, the, uh, for the simple reason that this was a steep street. And you had to take into account the stable of your neighbor. That's another stable there, a little further. Because the manure all came out on the street. And the street was an open sewer. That's why, had, uh, that's why everyone lived on the first floor. That's why everyone lived on the, on the first floor. You couldn't live on the ground floor. The, gr the ground floor was uh, horrible. And that's why, of course, uh, you had continuous epidemics in, in such a little town, not only in Assisi, in all these little towns. And that's why Francis started taking care and started organizing uh, some kind of uh, hospital. You see. And it was absolutely necessary. Uh, I wanted to show you here. You can't see very much of it anymore. See an old fresco, 14th century fresco. Uh, so you see the Madonna, Ma Mary with Jesus. But the saint on the right hand side is Saint Rocus, San Rocco. You see there? Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, and he's showing a wound. He's showing a, uh, um, the bubonic plague. He was the he was a, a pilgrim on his way to Santiago de Compostela. It's a very very famous uh, story. You know Santiago de Compostela. I wanted to say, there is a St. Francis gate, of course, but uh, say, uh, it's a Catholic tradition that the relic has to be there. Now, they didn't like that idea, of course. To <laughs> Um, so uh, when the, the funerary procession uh, took place and they uh, brought Francis' body from St. George, uh, I will show you later where it was, to St. Francis, when they got to the, the door, by surprise, uh, Elijah uh, um, so let the body come in, the coffin come in, closed the doors, locked the doors, so nobody was allowed to come in because he wanted to, to, uh, to hide the body because they had found seven uh, meters, so which is about uh, 21 feet underneath the altar. In the rocks, they had found a natural hole in the rocks to hide the body. So it was the right spot, but much deeper than anyone would expect to see to hide his body. But there had to be a secret spot. And so, you know, as Francis had become famous, uh, uh, there were princes, uh, cardinals. Uh, bishops and they were all locked out. You see, the door was closed, and they brought in the coffin. <laughs> An enormous scandal. Uh, um, they denounced uh, the vicar general to the pope, and the pope had to intervene. And the vicar general Elijah had to resign. Had to, he was, uh, but then he retired. He went to live in Cortona, in a little monastery in Cortona, a beautiful little monastery. And after a few years, he, he uh, managed to uh, to be elected uh, again. General Elijah of Cortona. So the, the tomb of Francis was hidden seven meters in, uh, under, underneath the altar. And, uh, uh, and just to show you, it was justified. Napoleon, Napoleon, when he occupied France, uh, he, uh, you know, we say in Italian, not all French are thieves, but buona parte, which means a good deal. 
<laughs> Buona parte si. Sì. Uh, many of them are because they stole an enormous amount of, of works of art in France, uh, in, in Italy, the, 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 the French during the occupation in the 19th century. And uh, uh, Napoleon gave order to his soldiers to look for the body of the Frenchman because Francis was not called Francis, he was call, uh, call, uh, called John. That was his real name, but they called him the Frenchman because his mother was French, so he was half French. So his body ought to be, according to Napoleon, in, uh, in Paris. You know? <laughs> and so they started excavating, but they only excavated for about 12 feet, and they couldn't find anything. And of course, this was six centuries after the burial, so they said, well, it's, it's all gone, you see. But it was, uh, as in, uh, further down. <laughs> okay, so... You see, it's here. And these were the stables for the horses and the donkeys. You see all the rings in the wall? Yeah. yeah. So the pilgrims, because you have to think Assisi, well, you are pilgrims, but uh, uh, Assisi was for pilgrims, right? Uh, which sounds obvious to you, but it's, uh, it's uh, not how it is now. It has changed very much in the last uh, 30 years. You know, in 1965, 1970, they were used to an average of about 300,000 pilgrims per year. Now they are not used, <laughs> but they have to uh, cope with about uh, 5 million visitors per year. You see the, the change in only 30 years' time. This is due to the bus uh, tourism. You see it's on any, any tour. Uh, uh, and so only a minority now are, are real pilgrims. All the others are, are just uh, tourists. And this is a very difficult problem, to tell the truth, because, of course, everyone has started opening uh, a little shop. There's an, it's plenty of kitsch now. Uh, very, very, commercialized. very commercialized and for the brothers it's very difficult to accept needless to tell you that when the earthquake came that some people said well the stones is, is uh, sand, sand or, or mud it, it, it can be this is very soft but it can be harder but uh, so when one stone comes out the whole wall can uh, crumble, slow right. collapse, yes. Right. So it's not, it doesn't need to, to collapse with the earthquake. But if one, if a few stones come out, uh, there's a real problem. And so the main problem was, um, it gum and we can see a video gum. about <laughs> Bazooka. No. Spider webs. Now he's having second thoughts, so he's decided to take you out for uh, Yes. Is that little olive wood T cross? That is a symbol of the pilgrim. A pilgrim who, who has been to Assisi has such a little T cross. A pilgrim who has been to Santiago de Compostela has a shell on his head. Uh, you see, it's a medieval uh, symbol. So uh, there's no choir, and you see here on the left hand side, so I'm not showing the tower, which is just next to the tower. Uh, stones had fall just above the, the wind, the, so there's a rose window, and above that rose window was a small window. And just above it, a few stones had fallen out of the, of the wall. And that was extremely dangerous, because that could simply uh, make the entire part crumble. And so that was repaired immediately. And another huge problem, huge, was not huge, there were, there were no huge, there were no huge problems. Uh, the, uh, on the bell tower, the uh, window on the left hand side, the keystone, well not the keystone, but the stone next to the keystone, had uh, come out, half half it come out, you see. Uh, so that was quite uh, worrying. But of course the main problem was in the upper church. I showed you the rock before, uh, so you can imagine that it was extremely difficult to make a tomb for St. Francis, as St. Francis was uh, famous, he was really famous, you know. Uh, uh, um, they wanted to make that tomb, the crypt, the crypt of the church, as big as a church on top, which they sometimes do for very important. Uh, uh, but that was um, almost impossible to do here. Because, uh, can you imagine excavating uh, that whole space in the, in the in the rocks and then building a church on top of it? That was all very complicated. So they chose another solution, which which uh, had been applied before, uh, really. Uh, but this was the first time they did it in such a spectac spectacular way. They chose a, a steep slope. You see. Yeah. and uh, build a, a triangular crypt uh, outside of the, uh, the grounds, on the, on the ground floor, uh, against the slope, and then the church on top. But who comes from the village, not, not as we have come, but from the center, goes into the church <coughs> without climbing one single step. But being, uh, and so you were convinced as a pilgrim to be on the ground floor. And then you would go downstairs in the darker part of the crypt, 
the tomb of St. Francis. So uh, uh, under, under the ground that you were not, you were, uh, you see, it was very cleverly, uh, very cleverly uh, built. So that way they, they had not, they did not need to excavate uh, the crypt. Now, uh, they immediately noticed that this church was not the right church for, for a, a, a place like Assisi because uh, 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 pilgrims come to Assisi, so they're all groups with a priest, and like you, they want to say Mass, they want to celebrate Mass, so you need chapels, you need al more, more than one altar. And in the church up there was only one hall, There's no, there, there are no lateral uh, naves, there are no chapels, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's one singular uh, hall and one altar, so absolutely the contrary of what they needed. That's why they decided, as they knew that the crypt was on the ground floor, in reality, they knew they, they could open a door here, right? And so that's what they did. In, uh, so this was only a later solution. This is a Renaissance, it's late Gothic Renaissance door, so made 100 years uh, later. Uh, to an entrance here, and uh, they, they transformed the crypt of St. Francis into the lower church, you see, into a second church, but a very functional church this time. They, they, as they, they knew, they could, they could open the walls and make chapels left and right. They made six chapels, three on the, on the right-hand side, uh, uh, three on the left-hand side, four groups, you see, so that groups could be uh, separated for uh, uh, 45 minutes or even 30 minutes in the, in the, in the city, uh, from the pilgrim's street. Now, now you don't have, there's no problem now. It's November. It's, uh, that building, a 13th century building. It was built soon after the St. Francis Church, because you have to imagine all those people, those pilgrims, were coming on foot. Uh, because you know, when you come to Assisi, uh, you deserve uh, full indul indulgence, indulgencia plenaria, full indulgence. All your sins until now are uh, being forgiven. If within a week you go, uh, uh, you confess and you uh, have communion. Um, but of course, nowadays, with this full indulgence, they're not so generous anymore because uh, people are not coming on foot. <laughs> it's a little, well, it's a little too easy to come to us easy now. Uh, you have to think in the old days, the, the, the risk, people had no uh, identity. As soon as you left your village, you were nobody. You could be uh, robbed and killed and they could not even identify you. If you would travel from uh, uh, Germany to France, uh, but so it was risky, a pilgrimage was, it was risky and unbelievably tough. People only had a uh, a stick and a bag, that's all they, they had, and homemade shoes, you can imagine. Uh, so this hospital, hospital was certainly specialized in foot care to disinfect feet, because an infection could be really dangerous. And uh, I told you before about organizing Assisi. There were several spots where people were allowed to wash clothes, because they had only one uh, change, probably, or, 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 or not even. But it was not allowed to wash here. It says you're fined one scudo. You know the the European money and uh, will be called euro, but it's called now ecu, uh, escudo. That's the old word escudo in in Portugal. Um, uh, scudo in Italian too. So one shilling. Sh uh, uh, um, and you lose your clothes if you wash them here. <laughs> uh, so we're here in the city. 
center. That is the tower of the captain. has grown steadily as they say they did but it's, it's not true they didn't <laughs> they all thought he was crazy uh, he was uh, out of his mind uh, you see his mother has a chain in her hands uh, of course so we don't know whether his parents look like this this is just uh, the reputation and the fortune of his family was spending all that money to to repair churches he was ashamed of, uh, of francis uh, and his mother although she had strong doubts um, mm, uh, could not support that her son was a prisoner, so she opened the chain and she made him uh, escape. Some of the earthquake damage outside the Basilica of St. Clair. You can see the crack running the length of the uh, building here. Over here, scaffolding here. Here is a, um, an old granite uh, balcony we found out about on the tour this morning. Granite comes from Sardinia, and what they do is they recycle a lot of the um, architecture in this area. That was probably a church, and before that it was a church, and before that it was a church. And now it's been made into this building here. Dad ought to be here. As you can see, all the birds are eating the wheat. The church is made out of wheat, and all the pigeons are eating it. Stone variety. Uh, from the This is they used for the oil usually, and they have to be black to be mature. Um, and and the all Italian tradition, but you know, all traditions are not, not very uh, respected anymore in modern agriculture. Uh, the Saint Martin's Day was a very important day in Italy because it was the day they would start drinking the new wine, the Vino Novello, Saint Martin's Day. And by the way, Saint Martin is up. Your thoughts. Hey, hey. I'm getting your thoughts. Oh my god, this class, I, I feel like um, hey, hey. close to heaven. Yes. Oh, it's amazing. There's Greg. We're getting ready to see the Pope. Hey, Greg.
What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah.
stuff's going to start for a while yet.
getting ready to go to Capri. Unfortunately, the ski lift is not uh, operating. So. Did you buy anything? Christmas presents for my Italian relatives. Oh, great. Hibiscus. Hibiscus. Thank you. I know you know. I gotta get one of those. Oh, we are, Pat. We're off, right? That's right. Don't take my picture. Yeah, I am. You don't. I hate my picture. Why do you do it? 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 Why
it's for the tourists. That's right. Look at that, isn't that some view? It's good nice to have a pizza out of the piazza over the bay, yeah. The pizza on the piazza. The pizza. That was very good. Oh, it was delicious. Very good. Yeah, pizza. pizza. Pizza Capri and Pizza Special. Look what I had. I had that Pizza Capri too. Isn't that good with the fresh tomatoes on it? Very good, John. Very good, John. Pomodoro Fresco. Bus ride. Uh, Get it up here somewhere, Frank. Yeah, well, that, then, including that, we have to be back by 4.45. Right. I wonder how long the bus ride takes. It only takes about 15 minutes. Oh. Okay. Otherwise, we all have Frank, to spend the night. It takes you to room. Upper Capri. It's, the same, it's like this, only it's Upper Capri. Oh. Do the cars. Uh, you have to pay? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
By the way, that seaweed around here is supposed to be really good to put a frothy head Kitty. of um, bubbles on top of beer. So maybe you should try some of the Italian beers. You can swim great for days afterwards. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yep, kelp is used in all sorts of products. But most of fire for ice cream. Yeah, you bet. Now, isn't that an amazing road? Now, this was, everyone asked about the road itself. It is a feat to um, the peasants here. They built uh, basically a trail for um, transport. Flash on the inside, it's not going to turn in, and it'll, it'll uh, reflect back. So that, that's what that is. Saitano is the town way over there, but here, Positano, which it was the old story of the Saracen pirates that supposedly took a, a Madonna. Uh, problems that we had in the Atlas Mountains, again, in Northern Africa, that caused tremendous. Yeah, we got one more little town, and then we're into the Malfi area itself. By the way, they make those undersea walls with something called, well, they look like concrete jacks. When I say jacks, not like jacking up your tires but that game you play with the ball and you spin your jacks and all that right oh, those jacks they're called tetrapods it's a bit of uh, trivia for you there's a couple different designs but that is the most common design and the city that has those in the united states is crescent city california this crescent city has a big crescent shaped bay and it was from i guess what uh, by the japanese and they have a modified tetrapod uh, there as well. She sure sounds like a Jurassic Park type creature, huh? But if you want to see them, they're also used as revetments to shore up their um, um, piers, and they're all around the town of Amalfi, so you can take pictures of these big concrete jacks out in the harbor. And this is the Grotto Azzurro, and there's actually a place where you go down uh, with your um, uh, group and then you get into little boats with these glass bottoms and they have a nativity scene at the bottom of this uh, undersea cave and that's what this is right here the conca azura with a flag, usually that means there's a diver down there, so it could be someone diving. This time of year they're putting out there too, a couple more with flags. Oh, hey Susan, there it is. What? Yeah, that's the, the neat little uh, castle the guy has out there. It's uh, again part of a watchtower complex. So I thought I'd go into that. TV and radio and the whole shop, running water. And at the bottom of the castle, you can go up the stairs to go take you down to the water. That's the castle spot. Castles are nice. Can Mama Rose buy it for me? Mama Rose. Okay. Here again. Yeah. They, they can spray gunite, uh, if that was cement, and then anchor it in, or you put the can mesh to keep them out from falling on us. So when that happens, it's just a bummer. Inside these places, though, you have beautiful marble floors, beautiful uh, wooden uh, door jams and wooden window frames, all hand built. Beautiful. This guy kind of looks all boarded up because usually in the summertime he's got a quite a stair master. Master. Well, they can do some stair <laughs> <laughs> well, 
you're looking down towards Salerno, where we uh, landed late uh, September of 1943 after Operation Husky and also landed at the same time to the north in Anzio and started a pincher move on the Gustav Line, which we've crossed already and we'll go and visit tomorrow. And I can, I'm looking right at the town of Amalfi. It's in the foreground. And then way off in the distance where those mountains are, the uh, uh, distance there, that's uh, the Salerno area in the Bay of Salerno. It's got a fairly busy port. Okay. Lumber, steel, cars. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, the mouth has got a few shoes, shoe stores. Let's see what's open. We're going back now. We had a very nice lunch. We bought some uh, pasta, various pasta. We're on our way back to Sorrento now, which is about a 20 mile drive. Inexpensive ties. Lots and lots of this you do most of your shopping as opposed to Rome. Well, this was uh, literally in two ounces of gold, so it should have been $600 worth of the gold just, uh, just back. And uh, the whole thing cost her about $389. So I think that's, I think it was a little suspicious. And the fact it said made in Korea when it was another thing. Well, it's a really cheap, a really Same pasta with uh, seafood. No, I don't want to take a seafood. 